everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoteric and our continuing series on the Mr. FPGA device. And today we're taking a look at the Nintendo Entertainment System and Famicom Disk System Core. Now normally I compare these against original hardware, but my Sharp Twin Famicom is in the closet. The disk drive is not reading floppy disks and it's midway to getting an RGB mod. But therein lies why this core is so awesome. Before we get too far involved though, if you can do me a huge favor, go down below and hit like and subscribe. And that notification bell definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined, you want to support the channel, we got a Patreon link down there as well. But I'm starting out with Punch-Out because this is a great test to tell how much lag is going on with any individual core. Because if you don't have a lag testing device, you kind of just have to play by feel. And I will say, playing Punch-Out with a USB wired controller, it is perfect. And this is a game that requires an immense amount of timing to get right. And even though we're just fighting Glass Joe here, if there was lag in the controller, it would be a lot harder. But my favorite part of this core by far is the Famicom Disk System support. But just going through the main menu options here, we can set the different regions, and then we have an auto disk swap for Famicom Disks. It's a really small feature, but it's absolutely amazing. And what I love about the Nintendo Entertainment System core is how many different palette options we have. Now this is wholly subjective. Whatever looks right to you is good for you. There is no right or wrong answer here. You can even do grayscale if you want, and some Nintendo games actually look really good in it. I mean, that would technically be wrong, but the palette colors are totally up to what you'd like them to be. And then we just have an autosave feature here as well. I just always leave that on. It's the easiest thing to deal with. And then we just go over to audio video settings. We can change the scan doubler. I never touch this. I like how it looks normally. You can do whatever you would like. But then if you go down here, you're going to see we have one extra option, three, but I don't really deal with those much, is extra sprites. The Nintendo Entertainment System sprites would flicker if there was too many on any one line. You can allow the system to not have those sprites flicker. Now, I like the original NES look, so I leave that off, and I've heard that it can cause a few bugs, but if you don't like the flickering, you can change that. But I think the Nintendo Entertainment System core is absolutely incredible. I love it, and I love it for a lot of different reasons. First off, getting an RGB signal or any other higher quality than composite signal out of the NES requires modification work and a soldering iron, and they're not the easiest mods compared to some other things you would do. So as far as video quality is concerned, this core is absolutely outstanding and it's the best looking way to play an NES that I have found. Secondarily, I love the fact that it supports the Famicom disk system because I have multiple consoles that work with floppy drives. I've got a Sharp Twin Famicom and I have an FM Towns Marty. Every console I have that supports floppy disks does not read disks. I've changed the belts, I've tried to calibrate the drives. When you get into calibrating floppy drives to try to get them to read, it's just a mess. So the fact that this will support Famicom Disk System games is absolutely incredible. But before we get too far into the Famicom portion, let's just talk about some NES stuff. I absolutely love DuckTales. I loved this show as a kid. I have watched the revamped show as an adult, and I played this game so many different times. And what I love and what I think is one of the best soundtracks in gaming is DuckTales, specifically the moon theme. It sounds perfect on Mister. It's exactly how I remember it. Go ahead and listen for like 30-45 seconds and I'll come back and tell you more about why this is one of my favorite cores. But enjoy, because the moon theme is incredible. I just think the moon theme is one of the best tracks on any NES game, and it sounds absolutely spectacular on Mr. It's clear, it's vibrant, it's everything that I would want it to sound like and how I remember it. But moving right on to Castlevania, I just can't say enough good things about the NES core, because I will say the modification to get better video quality out of an NES or equivalent hardware, it's a pretty advanced project, where here we can do so many things with the video quality and it looks amazing. Just moving around to all the different palettes, we can change it to look whatever we want to. And this is great because the NES, it was a composite system or an RF system, and TVs, CRTs always did something slightly different with the colors. So what you think the NES looks like in your head may be different than how I remember it. And being able to change these palettes around just gives you a little bit more control over the ultimate look. And then of course we have all the different cheats built in as well, especially with something like Castlevania, putting on invincibility may help you if you haven't gotten to the end of the game yet. I'm going to put it on for the capture just to show you guys how it works. 
but I love that there's all these cheat codes incorporated as well. It's basically like having a fully modified NES that also plays Famicom Disk System games that also has a Game Genie built in. And you're doing that all on a really small device, and of course you're not blowing on cartridges either. But Castlevania looks and sounds incredible. This is exactly how I remember it, except so much better because, you know, I have a composite Sharp Twin Famicom that's still not finished modding. So if I put this on my PVM, it looks really nice. But if I put it on anything else upscaled, not so much. And we'll make Simon Belmont dance here back and forth just to the beat of the music because I don't know why I've always enjoyed doing that. But again, it's just another classic NES game that looks and sounds and plays absolutely perfectly on the Mister. And I will say that as far as the control are concerned, I do not detect any lag in them whatsoever. Of course it is there in a very minute amount, but it is so imperceivable that it's not going to affect your gameplay, and that's why I do lead with Punch-Out, because that is just a very precise timing game. And of course it's going to play classics like Super Mario Bros. 3, all those games that you know and remember. What I really enjoy is just how fully featured this core is, because not many people have a Famicom Disk System. Of course, a lot of the games in North America that were Famicom Disk System games in Japan came out on cartridge. But to get the Famicom support running, you just need to get the BIOS. I can't show you where to get it, but you just need to unzip it and rename it to bootzero.rom. That's so the Mr. Core will understand what you're looking for. From there, all you need to do is navigate over to your SD card, and you're going to go under Games, and you're going to pick NES. Apparently, I forgot how the alphabet worked when I did this. And you're just going to copy the Boot Zero ROM into the NES main folder. Without this, Famicom Disk System support will not work, so you 100% need to have it. But you'll see here when we load up a Famicom Disk System game, you just need to remember to press start. That's just basically setting the disk if it was an actual disk. If you don't press start, nothing's going to happen and I'm sure someone's going to think it's not functioning. You just need to hit the start button. But Famicom Disk System support comes with so many extras. One, you get a ton of games that never came out in North America. And two, because there was hardware changes in Japan that actually made the NES a little bit more powerful on the sound front, you can play better versions of your favorite games like Kid Icarus here. It's an awesome game and now we have a save feature which is another great thing about the Famicom disk system that the NES didn't have. We can save our games in this instance to a virtual floppy disk but on real hardware to the actual floppy disk. And I love the fact that it automatically changes sides for you. Obviously you could just push a button to change the sides if you wanted to but it's a small quality of life feature that makes a huge difference. But again, everything looks and sounds incredible. This is one of my favorite NES games of all time, and I do have a Famicom Disk System version of it. The only problem is, my Sharp Twin Famicom isn't reading discs, and I think that's one of the best features of this core, is from a preservation standpoint, keeping floppy disk consoles alive is a chore. It takes a lot of work, it takes a lot of skill, and it takes a lot of luck to find a good floppy unit. So to have something like this available to us makes a huge difference. And again, it looks great, it sounds great, it plays great, it's the Kid Icarus you know and love. Just don't fall off like I did. I wasn't playing well that day. But moving right over to Castlevania 2 on the Famicom Disk System is definitely the black sheep of the Castlevania family, but the sound in this version is absolutely outstanding. The music is deep and rich. It's got sound that you didn't think an NES system could make, and it sounds absolutely pristine on this core. And I would say that that's actually my favorite part of the core is just how good the sound quality is. Everything is amazing. It's great on headphones, it's great on a TV, it's great on speakers, no matter how you throw the sound at at this core, it just sounds absolutely perfect. It's the best version of an NES sound I've ever heard, but don't take my word for it. Enjoy it for a second. It's a classic chip tune, and boy does it sound good. And you will see that this does the load. It actually is emulating the loading from the disc. And don't get hit by the bat. I've actually played an original Famicom disc system that I owned before I bought the Sharp Twin Famicom. And if you get knocked around too much, the loading can drive you nuts. And it's exactly the same here in the core, but that's just part and parcel of the hardware. But another just great thing is now we can try games that you probably wouldn't purchase. The games that are Japanese exclusive, maybe you've seen a photo or two, maybe they cost a lot of money. 
Mister gives you the ability to check so many different things out, and I absolutely love that because the NES library is huge. And when you go over to Japan and do it with the Japanese exclusive games for both the NES and the Famicom Disk System, there's so many great options. And I will leave the names of these games below because honestly, trying to pronounce them is just not my strong suit. I always get it wrong. But you're going to be able to play things that you've never checked out before, and it's going to be super simple. You're not going to worry about having to do with belts on the Famicom Disk System. You're not need to worry about modifying your NES to be able to get it into an upscaler with good quality. Mr. takes care of all of that for you and you can just enjoy your playtime. Don't get me wrong, I do love modifying consoles and that's why I am modding and repairing that Sharp Twin Famicom, but at the same time, there's games like Otaki here. It doesn't make any sense, it's a musical shmup, and this is something that I wouldn't really actually pick up on Disk System unless I had played it before, but now that I've checked it out, it's definitely something I will add to my collection. And this core just gives you the ability to play NES games, Famicom games, and Famicom Disk System games with the best visual and audio quality possible. It is just the absolute perfect Nintendo experience. But short of that, that's my thoughts on the core. I wish I could have compared it direct with original hardware, but like I said, my Sharp Twin Famicom is hurting and needs a lot of work. Short of that, I will be back next week with another video in the Mr. Series, and I'll have videos throughout the week as well. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I'd love chatting with you guys and hearing what you think, and you tell me what you think about the NES Core. Have you played it yet? Do you enjoy it? Do you wish it did something different? I'm always curious to hear what your guys' feedback is as well. Short of that, it definitely plays Mario 3, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.